Okay. From my daughter's research doing ancestry, she has proved that the boarding house that belonged to uh, my grandmother's grandmother, my great grandmother, Louisa Spurb. Long. Long. Not Louisa Spurb Sanders Long. There you go. Was in Oklahoma City. And my grandmother lived there with her when she married uh, Linderman. They moved all over the country, apparently, and her mother went ahead and made her living for herself and her son, Grover, who, of course, ultimately went out on his own. But when grandmother and Linderman separated and dad was a little boy, he thinks about four years old, or he thought since he's long gone, that they lived at least for a couple of years in this boarding house. And dad remembered it vividly. There were lots of older single men who were either widowers or bachelors that lived there. And he was little and he was pretty and he was charming and the old men spoiled him rotten. And grandmother finally drew the line when one of them was trying to teach him to chew tobacco. <laughs> but they would give him nickels and dimes and quarters. And if he wanted to go to the candy store or the ice cream store, one of them would take him and buy him whatever he wanted. And so I'm sure he was a very spoiled little boy because grandmother was helping her mother. Ultimately, another handsome man came along. Now, unfortunately, from what we can tell by the dates, it appears that she was still legally married to Linderman, but she ultimately married Luke because their first child was born the same year that my grandfather died, and he didn't die until August. So she had to have been up to something with someone else when this child was born. His name was Leslie Luke, and he died very young. But grandmother took daddy, and they went off to wherever Luke lived, which I think at the time was South Dakota. I'm not sure how Grandmother Louisa got there, but Luke was very, very, very cruel to my father. The story goes that he beat him with a horsewhip and chased him about the farm with a horsewhip beating him, and when he caught him, he grabbed him and scrubbed his face into the crap in an old-fashioned outhouse. Grandmother Long caught him at that and went in the house and got a butcher knife and was going to kill him. She had every intention of kill. killing him. Kill Robert Luke for his treatment of her beloved only grandchild. And that was the catalyst that made one of the aunties come and get daddy and take him to his grandmother Linderman in Blandville, Kentucky. Who was? Who was Ellen Linderman, Ellen Boland, Boland Linderman Pease. And she lived to be up into 1935. And I think, I'm not sure what year she was born, but I believe it was the late 1840s. I know she was well into her 80s when she died, so maybe it was the 50s, but she lived a long time. I, having been born in 1938, and my brother in 36, we never knew her. For a long time, we had a, a picture that we could not identify. It was an older woman holding my brother and sitting in front of the little house that Daddy inherited from Ellen. We finally decided that it was Ellen's older daughter, Eva, who had a, had a falling out with her mother many years before over ownership of land, and she didn't come to see her mother, but she only came after grandmother was dead, grandmother Ellen. So we think that is the woman holding my dad in that picture. Holding Carol. I mean, holding Carol. Dad was a grown man, and Carol was his oldest child, born in November 1936.